This video is sponsored by StreamYard. If you're an aspiring content creator but don't know where to start, this all-in-one platform is essential for all of your recording, editing, and publishing needs. And by using our code or following the link in the description, StreamYard is giving our viewers $10 off their first month subscription. So what are you waiting for, horror fans? Start creating, streaming, and posting today. Good evening, campers, dreamers, and babysitters. And well, 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 Luke. This is not a raw reaction review. No, this isn't even a classic review. No, this is still a new movie. This is a little something different. You know, I, I feel like I say that at least once a week on this channel. So maybe, maybe, maybe not. But to you me, like to shake things up. It's a little different. Yeah, it's a little change. It's a little, little bit of something else. And uh, we're talking about an angry boy. Which, uh, for those of you who do not know, this is a YouTuber movie in all uh, its glory. I guess I, I will say it. I was kind of debating whether or not to, to call it that or not. But this was a film that was made by uh, the gentleman behind a YouTube channel called Scary Mysteries. Some of you may know them. I went and checked out their channel off of that. You know, they've got over 800,000 subscribers. Um, and, you know, this is something that uh, just kind of fell into our laps. The director himself uh, actually reached out and was like, hey, would you guys like to uh, check this out? And yeah, so we thank you, Andrew Fitzgerald, for giving us this uh, you know, opportunity to check out your film. Um, you know, this is something that we've kind of battled with uh, behind the scenes a little bit on how to cover things like this. Because obviously, if you've been subscribed to the channel for a while, you know, uh, we're aspiring filmmakers ourselves. So it's one of those things where when you see a project like this that was crowdfunded, and was brought to the screen by fans and you know the people who are all working on it um are really trying their best with what they have um i feel like it's hard to put those into like a raw reaction review and compare that because you know we we watch everything from independent films with you know a couple million dollars to you know uh films that have you know billion like not billion dollar budgets but you know they have hundreds of millions of dollars and uh you know it's it's tough to really find a spot where we feel comfortable critiquing something like this so we just decided luke pretty much brought this to my attention and was like maybe we should just talk about this in more of a, a less formal setting and give our thoughts and opinions uh because yeah i mean there's probably 10 times as many hurdles and obstacles that these folks had to go for uh go through than even just your smallest independent film Yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, it's important to support creativity. Like you mentioned, Dylan, we are aspiring filmmakers and writers um, as well. So, you know, if we know how hard it is to make a film, especially with no budget and to kind of go out there and, and do the crowdfunding thing uh, to try, you know, and get the means to create a vision, you know. And to be honest, when we go into things like this, I'm always a little hesitant because I don't know what lays on that other side. You know, if it's going to be something that is pretty poor quality because those types of things, yes, it may be poor quality. Uh, maybe the writings there, maybe the ideas there, just the means um, of funds are not there to achieve something that, you know, is in your head to translate onto the screen. But I got to say, uh, going into an angry boy, um, I was rather um, surprised by the quality here and what they were able to bring uh, to the actual uh, film itself. There are things where, you know, I, I think being on a small budget, you would shy away from in terms of effects and things like that. But I really think, you know, they made they made good use of the budget, the actors that they had, and actually showing what they were able to achieve, you know? So uh, for me, this one, I was rather excited about, you know, it was something that maintained intriguing to me throughout the duration and you know i think in terms of a relationship and characters and friendships i think you know this film really showed what you could really do with something like that yeah and you know i think that uh if i want to go into some of my big positives i i do have to say overall um i was also very surprised with the quality that was presented here because again everybody knows it like even us if when we present a film uh, it, even if we ever get lucky enough to crowdfund something of this budget, uh, I would go in knowing that, yeah, we're not going to, you know, have something that's going to stand out. Like, it's not going to be something absolutely mind-boggling and incredible. Uh, but I, I was actually pretty surprised with just the uh, kind of tones and the energy that they were able to bring to the film. It does actually feel like a movie. And, you know, I know that's such a weird, like, thing to say, weird criticism to have, but... You watch so many of these movies of all different calibers of budgets, even ones with bigger budgets than this, that still feel like you guys aren't really 
selling me. You'd really feel like you are people just in the woods with a camera. And uh, this isn't just that. This isn't just people in the woods with a camera. There's a lot more going on here. And I think the thing that I got to really admire, the two elements that I want to kind of uh, prop up here are uh, that central relationship between uh, Ricky and Owen, our, our two kind of main characters. And uh, then you also have just the the big swing that uh, Andrew Fitzgerald was able to take with this by not making this like, you know, just a, a one room thriller or a bottle film or anything, because, you know, that seems to be the most achievable. But he didn't let any of that really hold him back. And even though, yes, not everything, there are some CGI and there's some CGI in here that doesn't look the best. But the fact that they committed to it and they said, no, this is how we're going to tell our story and this is how we're going to show it. It, it is commendable on all fronts. I, I definitely think that. And yeah, I mean, when you have competent actors like they had here, even Eric Roberts, who's in this for, you know, a, a small, I would say more cameo-esque kind of appearance, uh, plays a pretty big character, but not there a ton. I I still found him to be relatively uh, well done. I mean, like, I, I don't really, usually when I think of Eric Roberts, I think of my little goofy sci-fi shark exploitation films that he's popped up in here and there. So the fact that he, I was actually able to buy him in a little bit more of a serious role his first time since maybe The Dark Knight, I was like, good job. Good job on that. Yeah, and you know, it caught me off guard to see Eric Roberts in here. I'm not overly familiar with him. I've seen him in um, a handful of things, nothing that necessarily I can place. But, you know, seeing him in here, I think, you know, in this being a smaller budgeted film, it is, you know, making use of a name actor like that, you know, while his role sparing, you know, you use him into an integral part of the actual storytelling and, you know, we check in on him every so often. And I think that was a smart play there because, you know, um, you get that that feel of, you know, being an antagonist and um, having this kind of overlord sense, I guess. Um, and I think that really did work when it when he was used. I think it worked and he really established those relationships that he has to people outside of that space. Um, and then going into the relationship of, um, our two, I guess, main characters of, um, what's it, Owen and, um, and Ricky, Ricky, I believe. Yeah, um, Ricky. um, I was really surprised on how much I resonate with those characters. Now, performance wise, I wouldn't say that anything groundbreaking, anything, you know, out of the ordinary here, but, you know, nothing bad, which, you know, is really all I can ask for in terms of, you know, when you're looking for these smaller budgeted films. And I really love how, uh, they resonate with each other and you know how it's kind of through thick and thin you know um ricky shows up for owen all the time and i really thought that was really well done because you know you really get that sense of friendship through there um and then you're right in terms of you know this not committing to just like a one room thriller or anything where this there are many times in this i had to you know the message in my head was oh yeah this is a smaller film and we've seen films that you know we've covered a lot of films that you know seclude themselves to one room and really try to achieve that you're forgetting that this is a smaller film but the dialogue just isn't there the moments just aren't there this one is very expansive we cover a lot of ground in just um I, this is like an hour 40 so it's a pretty mm -hmm. substantial uh, weight of a film here and we go all over the place it isn't like a lot of retread or anything like that when we're in a setting there is a method to the madness there's a reason we're there and they really do make use of it um, so overall, you know, this is something that it makes me forget that it's a smaller budgeted film. And I think with relationships and what they do cover, I think there's some touchy subject matter in here uh, for people, which, you know, I, I think um, I, I don't think it'll offend anyone, but it's because it, it is something that is very real. And I think, you know, it brings a terrifying aspect, a very different terrifying aspect. I want to say this thing is like, overly gory there are a couple elements in here that you know really do hit for maybe some gore hounds but it's not like an overly gory or overly horrific film but it is terrifying in a particular sense yeah and you know that is something uh i will say is that there isn't a ton of gore there's definitely some blood there's some uh you know sequences that could get a little shocking for some people but i i don't think it's ever going to uh, be something that I have to really worry about when I throw this on for anybody who might be like offended or upset by any gore or anything like that. It is more the subject matter and kind of what we're dealing with, um, you know, not to dive too deep into spoilers, but kind of like a culty type thing that's, uh, you know, you're kind of uh, dealing with, but it's taken from a, a realistic standpoint. It's taken from a, a very much a grounded standpoint. It's not like we're going too far into the realm of supernatural of by any means. And yeah, I thought that Caleb Lowry as Ricky was was really solid. 
Um, and I got to say that uh, Scott Kallenberg, who was Owen, our main character, uh, looking at their filmography just now, these two, that they don't have anything but a handful of short films to their name. So, I mean, for this being their uh, first real uh, film like together, like first full length feature, I thought they both did really well. I, I think that they, they brought their A game to it. You could tell that they really wanted to uh, show up for the director and for the production. And I think it really does pay off because, yeah, I do buy their friendship. I think that they they do uh, a lot of really fun and uh, unique things here that set them apart from just your standard. These guys are best friends written on the page. You know what I mean? They actually do some work to build up a relationship there. And uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, overall, I, I was really impressed with a lot of this movie. Um, and, you know, it's not something that I, I can honestly say that I, I may watch again. It is one of those ones where it's like, it, I'm not upset that I watched it, but I, I definitely think that just for me as the kind of films that I like and when it comes to these kind of uh, thrillers, these cultish thrillers, um, I, I, I tend to like a little bit more of a particular version of them. This one, uh, for me, I think with the budget limitations with everything in mind i'm excited with what they did i just think overall this isn't something that's like incredibly unique or anything like that this isn't something that's blowing me away yeah i would say that as well you know it's nothing an overly unique take on a story or anything like that i think it's a very real story um that you know that you can point to and say well there are um things that have actually happened that are like this um so it could resonate with people in some instances like that um, but, you know, this one, the biggest achievement is, you know, looking at, like you said, a lot of a lot of the actors are from short films. You know, this is kind of diving into that feature, which uh, is, is such a big step from, you know, going into those short films, those, you know, 10, 15 minute short films into an hour 40 film. Uh, those are such big steps from an acting perspective, from a production perspective, you know, and I think, you know, this shows a lot of potential in terms of what is going to be going on down the road for these actors as well as our director here. Because, uh, you know, again, making use of this film and making me forget that this is a smaller budgeted film. And I, it honestly felt like it was just another screener I got from a production company that we regularly get. And it's like, oh, well, this is what we have offering on Shutter or Screenbox, anything like that. It honestly stands toe to toe with some of those things uh, that we have seen uh, even this year, you know, cause we've seen, <laughs> there, there's some stuff with bigger budgets that, you know, uh, we've given uh, bad ratings to. So, and this one's not even close. So. You know, this one, like we said, we're not doing our raw reaction here. Um, this one, I believe, is on uh, VOD. It yes, it's on VOD. It just um, dropped on Friday. So uh, you know, I'm putting this up Saturday. So, yeah, you'll, you'll be able to find this on VOD. And this is something I can easily say uh, it's worth kind of, you know, supporting, going out there, spending your money, giving this a watch. Um, if you're a fan of gore, there are a couple of scenes in here that I think will do the trick for you. Again, it's not overly gory. Subject matter is a little touchy, but I don't think it's offensive to anyone. And I think you'll buy the relationship between Ricky and Owen. I think they did a great job. So, you know, for me, this one is something I can easily say go out and support because there's a lot of potential from actors, the director, everyone involved here. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing. I, I think that at the end of the day here, we want to make sure that this uh, film gets a bit more of a platform so that way people can go support it and hopefully that they, they'll be able to do it. But uh, genuinely, this isn't something where, you know, I, I could easily come on here with Luke and we could say, hey, you know, this movie wasn't for us, uh, but, you know, it's it's something that uh, may intrigue people and it's low budget. And I know there's going to be films where we're going to have to do that, where we're going to have to say this wasn't for us. These are our negatives. Uh, but because it's small and it's independent, I still want to try to support it. But this one, I'm happy to say I am excited to support this. I am excited to recommend this because it, it really wasn't that bad. It was actually really competently done. So, you know, and I, I think that's rare. So I'm, I'm just going to say that I think an angry boy is definitely something you should try to seek out. At least, uh, you know, throw a couple bucks on the rental. Uh, give it a watch if you're into these kind of uh, crime thrillers. Uh, if you go to Andrew's channel, uh, Scary Mysteries, you can see that uh, this is in line with his interests. So if you're a fan of that channel and those true crime kind of things, uh, this is definitely going to be uh, something within that realm. So you should definitely check it out. Um, and yeah, I, I would definitely say that uh, I would be open to getting more of these. So, I mean, if you are a filmmaker, a YouTuber, somebody who's interested in this, and you want us to at least just cover it, give our honest opinions and thoughts on it. 
um, and just, you know, get the name out there. We're totally open to doing that. So uh, all I ask is that uh, if we come back and we don't like your movie, don't beat us up for it because we're just trying to be honest. You know, we're just trying to to give you our thoughts and opinions. And for Andrew, it worked out. So all righty. Other than that, guys, got a lot of great stuff up on the channel. So definitely uh, check that stuff out. We just uh, saw a few movies this week, one involving a shark, one involving a different kind of zombie film. And I went and saw a movie about people standing in a box and something watching them. Uh, and it was all right. So other than that, uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up here. So until next time, I'm Dylan Newell. And I'm Luke Janesco. And remember, stay scared. Do the horse shit, gonna do it live. Put splatter cast ticket every day they lie. Splatter cast, gonna smash your ass.